Welcome to the housing update for the first one in January of 2024. Randy, tell everyone where you're from. TBF Mortgage. And we're here to talk to you about what's happening nationally and then more importantly, what's happening locally. So let's jump right into it. Mortgage rates. What the heck is going on, Randy? Yeah, I mean, here's what we know. You know, they went up for a quite a long time and the Fed made an amazing announcement, one that's everybody everybody's excited about. Maybe as, as many as six rate drops next year? As many? Woohoo! Do we think we're going to have a great year, Mary? <laughs> I think that our buyers are going to get their homes of their yeah. dreams. Absolutely. Yeah. From that perspective. So they, what, ended a couple weeks ago at 6.61%, you Correct. know, yep. um, on the downtrend. And what is our friend Dean Baker um, from Economic Center for Economic Research saying? It also appears that mortgage rates are now falling again. They will almost certainly not fall to pandemic lows, although we may soon, so, or we may soon see rates under 6% again, which would be low by pre-Great Recession standards. You know, Randy, one of the analysts that actually puts all these slides together, Keeping Current Matters, we love you. Um, they go out and look at all the analysts. They're predicting 555, five, five. so 5% interest rate in the first digit, 5 million homes sold. Now they might be smoking something. And I don't remember what the extra five is for, but it's sad to say. But it is a 555. Five, five. I think they said 5% and then 5 in the first digit, um, which is, I think, wonderful. It's possible, too. Possible. Yeah. With six in the in the year we're going into, we all know election years really the person that's in charge wants to stay in charge and the one that's not in charge wants to push it down. So it's good for all people. Yeah, regardless of what camp you're in, it doesn't matter. Like mm -mm. they're gonna prop up some numbers and it, are you gonna take advantage of it or not? Like that's the only question you have to ask yourself. I love that. You know, what about Lawrence Young, um, chief economist at NAR? What's he saying? A marked turn can be expected as soon as mortgage rates have plunged in recent weeks. Marked turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I found kind of interesting. Randy, 78.7% .7 of mortgage rates, are the lock-in is what they're referring to as a lock-in, mm -hmm. are less than 5%, which is pretty phenomenal. It's hard to let go of that rate when you're getting a new rate that was at 8% or close to it before, right? So, but, you know. Wait, hang on. Let's break that down for a second. Yeah, let's, let's, let's really do. break that down for people out there. What does that mean? 78% of people have a rate less than five. How many of those people locked in their first house when they bought that house? Less than five. I bet you less than half. So what does that mean for today's borrowers? Yeah. You still have to get that property at the price that you're going to want it. And the rates are going to do what they're going to do. Nobody keeps their interest rates for more than three or four years, especially when they're coming down. Yeah, good point. You you refinance. You refinance. Yeah. I mean, that's what you do. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't buy their house at less than five. No, you're right. Nope. The last, uh, I did a refi and we did not buy our house at less than five. Yeah. If you're waiting for, for interest rates to go below five, let me tell you how much more you're going to pay for that house. Mm, good point. Right. You know, to your point and Lance Lambert's of uh, Rossi Club, tell me what he said. We might be at peak lock-in effect. Some move up or lifestyle or lifestyle sellers may be coming to terms with the fact that three and four percent mortgage rates, they're not returning anytime soon. If the lock-in effect eases up further in 2024, it could help boost existing home sales from the very low levels experienced at the end of this last year, 2023. Yeah, I think so. I mean, honestly, the closer we get to that five number, the more people are gonna jump back in because they're ready to move. They just, it's, there's a couple things we'll talk about here in a minute, but affordability is one of them. We, we've said this on previous updates, 1% peel back in mortgage rates is 15 mil, million new borrowers, mil, million new buyers back into the market. What is that going to do for competition? What is that going to do for home prices? Call us. Yeah, well said. So what's Erica Fleming saying from Bright MLS, you know, which is one of the largest MLSs in the Northeast and the U.S.? Homeowners who aren't selling aren't influenced by rates, with 90.5% of successful November sellers stating they were going to sell regardless of what the rates are. So true. Yeah, exactly. So homeowners aren't influenced by it because they're going to go somewhere else. Or we've been talking a lot about it. Maybe I'm going to take the money out of this and buy my next house. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't really need the money because there's so much equity in these homes right now, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we've got she goes on to say roughly half of November buyers were going to buy regardless of interest rates and another quarter purchased with cash. 
Cash will continue to be king even as rates ease next year. And no matter the direction of rates, households buying out necessity will continue to find a way to purchase. Always true. True. Yeah. Your job moves you. You need more room for babies. What do they say? Diamonds, diapers, deaths. Or, or you don't want to rent anymore. You don't want to pay somebody else's mortgage. Yeah, for you sure. You want to invest in your own future and your yeah. own equity. Well said. So, you know, at the end of the day, they're seeing that in the Northeast, 25% cash. In our market, it's 60 to 70% cash, Randy, yeah. um, from that perspective. But, hey, top three reasons buyers pause their decision. Yeah, I mean, mortgage rates, 72%. Okay, inventory, 34%. Affordability, 17%. That doesn't add up to 100 Um and they all affect one another. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's more or less. It's probably yeah. a little more, right? But they, they um, all go together. I mean, yeah. they, they all go to affordability has to do with how much are the interest rates. I right. Mean, they all go together. They're all the same thing. Right. But that's just the answers that the public gave us. Right. And or their perspective of they all go together. Right. Yeah. I, I want a lower interest rate, which it really is probably I don't want to put it on the survey. But really, an affordability issue. Or, or two years ago, I got pre-approved with you guys, Mary. Yeah. And I went to look at houses, and I could afford a six hundred thousand dollars house. And then all of a sudden, I came back to you guys a year and a half yeah. later, and now I'm at four twenty five, and the houses have gone up. What just happened to me? I missed. I missed. We don't want you to miss the yeah. next one, for sure. So Goldman Sachs, what are they saying? We now forecast three consecutive twenty five basis point cuts in March, May, and June to reset the policy rate from a level that Powell's recently taken describing well into restrictive territory rather than just restrictive. So what what does 25 basis points get me in a percentage? Okay, so most people think, well, that means the, the rates are going to, you know, be cut by a quarter point. It'll probably follow. We probably think those, those basis point cuts are going to happen in the first quarter, towards the end of the first quarter, into the second. And you're going to see rates peel back right when the market heats up in most markets, which is summer. Opposite for us, right? Right, right. Opposite for us. But, like, you're going to see those rate cuts – Guess what's going to happen like right after summer? Oh, my gosh. There's a thing called an election. There's a little thing called an election. <laughs> what, what do we think the GDP numbers are yeah, going to be? Yeah, right. How are yeah. those unemployment numbers going to be? <laughs> I paid the, the least I've ever paid for gas in the last five years just two days ago. Yeah. You don't, no, you don't think yeah. those things aren't all by design? And again, it doesn't matter. Guys, just take advantage of it. Yeah. It doesn't it's matter if it's here. yellow or purple or green yeah. or whatever. Who's ever in charge and whoever wants to be in charge. Yeah. It's a function of what happens. Yep. Now, I love this slide. It's a little honky or wonky, so to speak. But, you know, the the 30-year mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10-year Treasury yield. And I've, I've said this on this show before, mm -hmm. in unison um, for over 50 years. Yeah. And the average spread is 1.72. Now, we are at a 2.78 spread, which means we have room to bring that down, which, oh, guess what? Interest rates will fall. Yep. And, and like I said, with what we know now, with what the Fed has already announced, I mean, everybody's gearing up. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For yeah. sure. So let's talk a little bit about home prices, because if I can get a great mortgage rate or at least one that is palatable to me, mm -hmm. can, what can I do and can I afford it? And is it, is it too late? I hear that. Did I miss the boat on a home, you know, on a home to buy and I'm never going to gain any more appreciation? Well, let's look at this. Home prices in 2024, the, let's see, I think there's seven folks on here, four, mm -hmm. five, six, eight, eight that have, um, Given their forecast, mm -hmm. the average of that is 1.5%. Now, Realtor.com and Zillow are both still pretty negative in the red, mm -hmm. but not horrible. They're not talking about a big loss. And then most every, the MBA, Mortgage Bankers Association, they're the most bullish at 4.1. Our markets will crush this, these numbers, though, too. Yeah. Like, our market absolutely will crush these numbers. So uh, from your lips to God's ears, we'll remember that at the end of December. Yeah. Um, so... Let's look at this, Randy, because, okay, this next year, now, the, they, um, in 2023, we had a 5.92% uh, average price performance. Mm -hmm. They're saying it's, the analysts are saying 1.5, but they, they've upped this, that mm -hmm. it'll be 2.35. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it, that it, you know, steadily increases to 2028 of 4.14. And, you know, one of the things, I know you love this slide, and that's why we kept it in this deck, mm -hmm is that if I buy that $400,000 home and I sit on it, I, I live in it and I love on it and everything else, don't do anything with it, like I don't put any you know updates or anything else, but just own it mm -hmm. and maintain it, in four years, 
I would have gained $72,000. On a place that you have to live in. Everybody needs shelter. So right. you have to live in it. You can actually make money. I just had this conversation with an agent on your group. And we were talking about investments and things like that. And it's just like, she's doing a couple of flips. She's doing a couple of builds. Why? Mm -hmm. Because she knows real estate. Yeah. She knows the need will always be there. The other fl the, the flip side of this is when you buy a house for 400000 this is assuming a cash buyer because otherwise you're paying the mortgage down too. The investment is, or the investment is actually higher. Yeah. After five years, you're also going to pay the principal down. Yeah, true, true. So this is just kind of five years based solely on increased home equity and, you know, household wealth over the next five years and 400000 home price. So, you know, tell me what Selma Hap, you know, at CoreLogic, what's she saying? Home price gains in the CoreLogic S&P Case and Schiller Index have increased by about 7% since the beginning of the year and are about 1% higher than the peak of 2022, recovering all losses recorded in the second half of 2022. To be expected, again. Yeah. We were going to get them back. Yeah. No shock. Yep. Now, this is a messy slide, um, as we both know, but one of the things I love about this is from 1980 to 2022, annual home appreciation was an average of 4.92%. Now, if we look at 20 and 21, they were pretty high. But if you look at, what, 7, 8, 9, and 10, they were negative. So that's average. You know, where can, you said this, where can you get 4.92% on your money? And also, if you look at this, it, these huge years of 20 and 21, what happened? Interest rates were 3%. People were getting 265 of course, the appreciation that shot house prices through the roof. So they, they corrected the interest rates, brought it back down to normal. And what are they going to do? They're going to lower the interest rates again next year. So like this, this slide goes directly with that. I could see that going to five, seven and a half. You said it here, 5.7 yeah. and a half. Yeah. All right. Um, she goes on to say. With mortgage rates dropping, demand for homes in the early 2024 is likely to be strong and will gain it will actually put pressure on prices. It will, similar to trends observed in 2023. Most markets will continue to reach new home price highs over the course of 2024. New. So let's talk about what's happening in our neck of the woods, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to put this up here because we're talking about, you know, um, inventory. And as you can see, we're not at the same level we were in January of 20, which is before the pandemic. We are below that, but inventory went down significantly and it has risen. That's not a bad thing. No. Um, from that perspective. If I look at month supply for sale, now keep in mind, if I have a 5.6, 1 to 12 is the scale on this, one month supply or less up to 12. Mm -hmm. We're at a 5.6 in Collier County and a 5.4 in Lee County. Mm -hmm. If you look at that compared to 20, we are less, mm -hmm. but that just means it's going to take, we have 5.6 months to sell a home of inventory. And what does that mean? That just means it's it's kind of moving into an even market. Even market would be a six or seven months of inventory. It's still good news for a seller. Yeah, it's great news for a seller. Yeah. And it's great news for a buyer that you don't have to do something crazy in 10 seconds, which was really a problem. Last but not least, I want to look at the median price. Now, this is looking back. All three of these slides are looking back as a 12-year look back on a monthly basis, so we get an easier flow to it. Um, but look at what's happened with median prices. Now, this is median, not average. Average is going to be, you know, higher. Um, but they've gone up since 20. And they're still going up. It's not like they've stopped. So, you know, I think from a standpoint, when you look at all those things, Randy, my question is always, is it time to move? You know what? We, 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 have, we talk to the same people. And we talk to a lot of smart people that are buying second homes or investment homes down here. They're all telling me the same thing. They know... This year, for every reason that we just stated in this in this in this update, they know at some point more buyers are going to come back into the market, rates are going to lower, prices are going to go up. Everybody I know right now is still trying to get that last bit of get the house at the price I want it, knowing that if they carry an interest rate on it, they'll lower that over time. Yeah. If they're cash, they don't want to pay sixty thousand dollars more for a property next year than they can get it for right now. So the short answer is. Is it time to move? Down here? Absolutely. <laughs> and you should it's always, always move, move. You should always move and, you know, 
for your reasons and not for somebody else's. But we here at the Bartos Group and at uh, TBF Mortgage, we really are here to help you through that decision with equity reports and making sure if you go on to buy that you've got that ability and easy way to do it. Um, because the system and the process is not easy, but we here know how to make it work for you. So until next time, I'm Mary Bartis, the Bartos Group of Premier Plus. And Randy Williams with TBF Mortgage.